What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video and today we're going to be going over the Dragon Knight healer. So, DK healers are in an interesting spot right now. They've gotten a series of buffs over the past few patches to kind of make them a little bit more desirable at endgame content. Uh, they still don't have unique synergy, so in that regard, you know, they're still kind of below other healers that do provide a unique synergy, like Templars, Wardens, for example. Um, but one of the major changes that happened in Dragonhold was the fact that engulfing flames, the additional flame damage that it provides now scales off of Max Magicka and spell damage, some sort of combination thereof. So now, if you're not bringing Magicka Dragonite into group, Mag Decays can only get probably around 5% or so additional flame damage. So if you want the full 10%, you're going to want to bring either a Magicka DK DPS, which is certainly a possibility, or you're going to want to bring in a DK Healer, which is probably the only other spec that's capable of hitting the additional 10% uh, on the Engulfing Flames debuff. That being said, that single buff does not necessarily make a DK Healer worth running. Like I mentioned, you could just run Engulfing Flames on a Mag DK and just call it a day that way. So while Mag DKs have gotten iteratively stronger over each patch, they're still not going to be the best healer that you can run for certain trials. Again, the lack of the unique synergy kind of brings them down a little bit, and in general, they have a little worse sustain compared to other classes. Um, so in terms of actual uh, magic sustain, not as great as, for example, a Templar or a Warden. That being said, it's still possible to clear pretty much all content in the game on a Dragonite healer. It's just going to take you a little bit more effort in order to get onto teams and perhaps clear the content in the first place. So... Just like the rest of our build videos, we will not be going over gear. All gear is going to be covered in a separate video, which should be popping up in the upper right-hand corner right now. Check out that video if you want to know what gear you should be running on a healer. So go ahead and pause this video, go ahead and check that out, and return back here when you have a sense of what sets you want to wear. And then we'll go over skills as well as the general philosophy behind healing. We will not be doing a parse because healers don't actually have any parses. So instead we'll talk about what sets Dragonite healers apart and the general philosophy behind healing. So let's go ahead and get started here with skills. So starting off with our front bar. This is the Restoration Staff bar. We have Illustrious Healing. Obsidian Shard, so uh, one thing I do want to note here is that I am don't believe I am on healer CPs right now, so the healing done that you're going to be seeing is going to be a little bit on the lower side. But again, Luscious Healing here. Obsidian Shard, this is our Burst Heal, which did, has gotten a little bit better uh, over iterative patches. Comet Prayer for the Minor Berserk. We have Fragmented Shield for the Major Mending. So we want to go with Fragmented because it does give us a longer duration on the Major Mending. And then we have Energy Orb for the heal as well as the Combustion Synergy. And then for our ultimate, we are running Reviving Barrier here for the additional Magicka region that we get from the Magicka Aid passive under the support lines. So you can get up to a maximum of 10% additional Magicka regen for each support ability you have. Um, so if you only have, uh, if you're not at support 10 or support 9, I believe, is when you get Magicka Aid 2 out of 2, uh, you will have 5% initial magic regen instead if with barrier slotted. Again, Magicka DKs have a little bit worse time sustaining because their combustion passive is not quite as good as other abilities. So we would like to have this initial Magicka regen from having barrier slotted. And on our back bar, we have Elemental Drain, which is a little bit of a flex spot because you only need one healer to run this ability. So if you are not running this and your other healer is running this ability, you can swap this out with another ability. Cinderstorm for another heal over time. Block aid for the in chance to proc enchants while you're on your front bar. And also for the off balance uptime, it's the most consistent way to set enemies off balance. Cauterize for another uh, heal, not quite as strong uh, in terms of burst heal compared to Obsidian Shard, but still a pretty decent additional burst heal nonetheless. And then engulfing flames for the additional uh, flame damage debuff. So note here that we are at 8%, but this is without major sorcery. So if we go ahead and add in major sorcery, we'll see we're at 9%. And then with Warhorn, we're sitting at 10%. So in an actual raid, we'll be able to hit 10% uh, as long as we're hitting our major sorcery and things like that, as well as our Warhorn buffs. So even though it does hit 8% without all of our buffs, it is actually 10% once we have all of our raid buffs applied. And obviously, 
Mr. Warhorn for the Major Force. Now in terms of other abilities that you're going to want to have on hand. Under the Ardent Flame Line, not much here. You could argue that you might want to have Unrelenting Grip to help uh, your tanks pull things in, but it's not absolutely necessary to do that because it also does act as a soft taunt, so you will end up getting hit if you use Unrelenting Grip, so might want to avoid using that. Under the Draconic Power Line, if you need an AoE Interrupt, which might be necessary, you're going to want to go with Deep Breath here, but beyond that, not much else here. Toking Talons is interesting because it is one of the few sources of AoE Minor Maim, but typically speaking, a tank will be running this rather than a um, healer. So don't really mess around with this ability because a lot of tanks are expected to do all the CC, all of the crowd control work. So having a healer run this might kind of upset that balance a little bit and kind of undo a lot of their hard work. Finally, under the Earth and Heart line, I do want to point out you can run Molten Armaments or Igneous Weapons for the Major Brutality and Sorcery. Usually DPS will be getting this from potions, but perhaps you're running in a group where you, they don't want to run the potions, then you can run this instead. Running this will also allow them to run the minor heroism potions so they can get their ultimates up a little bit faster. So something to consider with group makeup. If you are running a DK healer, you can forego your typical weapon power potions or spell power potions, run igneous weapons, and have everybody run minor heroism potions for faster ultimate gain. The downside of that is the minor heroism potions are quite expensive to, to make, so just keep that in mind if you do want to go that route. For restoration, or should I say destruction staff abilities here, you might want to pick up Crushing Shock as a ranged interrupt. It's always nice to have that on hand, just in the back of your pocket, in case you need a ranged interrupt. The restoration staff line, two abilities here, are actually all three other abilities. So you have Radiated Regeneration, which acts as a pretty decent heal over time ability. Then you have Healing Ward, which you're usually going to end up using with the Black Rose Prison Staff with the Mage Vitality it provides. The actual burst heal that comes from Healing Ward is not terrible, but it's also not great either compared to something like Obsidian Shard or even Cauterize. Um, so it's kind of up to you how you want to run Healing Ward. You can run it as a burst heal, or you can just run this strictly with the Black Rose Prison Restoration Staff or the Major Vitality that that staff provides. Then we have Quick Siphon and Siphon Spirit. Both of them apply minor lifesteal. Siphon Spirit also provides minor magical steel as well. So if you have a tank that's running Pierce Armor, you're already getting that major, fr uh, major breach. You don't necessarily need to run Ellie Drain. You can just run Siphon Spirit instead for the minor lifesteal and minor magic steel wrapped up into one. Otherwise, you'll usually be seeing something like Overflowing Altar being run for the Mana Lifesteal for the additional uh, Blood Feast synergy, and then Ellie Drain for the Minor Magicka Steal. Quick Siphon is nice because it also grants Minor Expedition to everybody who's healed by the Mana Lifesteal that's provided by Quick Siphon. So a little bit of additional movement speed is always welcome in certain trials. If you ever need to run a shield, you can just run the Light Armor Shield, either more for Death Magic or Harness Magicka. Yep, magic will give you a little bit larger shield versus harness magicka, which will give you some magicka return whenever you take damage. Kind of pick whichever one you prefer here. Uh, if you are running Zen's Redress, because that is usually going to be on a healer, I do want to point out that Soul Trap is probably one of the abilities you'll be using to get Zen going. Uh, another ability might be, for example, Scalding Rune. Um, that's another example, or degeneration. So just bear in mind that if you are running Zen, you might need to replace some of these flex spots out with dots in order to get your Zen's debuff going. Back to other abilities though. Under the Fighter's Guild line, Ringer Preservation uh, provides a minor protection and a little bit of healing done, so always nice to have on hand for those fights where you might be stacked up and need additional mitigation. Uh, nothing much under the Mage's Guild line except for Scalding Rune and Degeneration for the Zen's Redress buffs. Under the Psychic Order line, Mend Wounds, either Morph, Mend Spirit, or Symbiosis are interesting abilities. Uh, so they do have the potential to be the strongest source of healing done per second. The ability itself acts as a toggle, so it basically replaces your light and heavy attacks with a healing attack instead. So you're no longer able to weave attacks against your bosses. Now this might be beneficial for those of you guys who are running Hollow Fang's Thirst, because that does proc off of both healing and damage. So depending on where the boss is standing and where the proc spawns in relation to the boss's hitbox, if you happen to proc it by damaging the boss, you might not be able to get that extra magicka sustain back to the group. So with Symbiosis and Ben's Spirit, the only way to proc it now is by healing the group, so Hollow Fang's Thirst will always proc on the group. 
So that is one niche use of men's spirit in symbiosis, though it is not really one that I would necessarily recommend running this ability for. Uh, so definitely an ability to have on hand if you need some heavy healing, some heavy healing done. Uh, and then under the anointed line, make sure to have all these abilities unlocked. So you want Overflowing Altar for the Minor Lifesteal and the Blood Feast Synergy. Shadow Silk for the Black Widow Synergy. The Synergy has been nerfed over recent passages, pat patches, but it's still a pretty decent ability to have, if anything, for the additional Synergy for your Lacestis, for your Stamina DPS. Inner Rage, because there are going to be some fights, some strategies where the healer is going to be taunting things. So make sure to have that taunt ready. Then Bone Surge for the Mage of Vitality from the Bone Surge Synergy. Very strong healing buff to the group, which is going to be very beneficial in certain scenarios. Example, Cloud Rest. Help combat Baneful Mark. And then obviously Energy Orb because it is one of the strongest heals in the game right now. Finally, under the Alliance War line, we've already talked about Reviving Barrier and obviously Aggressive Warhorn for the Major Force. But the other ability you want to have on hand is going to be Efficient Purge to help purge the group because there will be fights where you need to purge negative effects. And so Efficient Purge is obviously the best way to do that. In fact, it's the only way to do that on a Magicka, or should say a Dragonite healer. That pretty much covers all of these skills here. So in summary, in terms of flex spots, Illustrious Healing, Comet Prayer, Fragmented Shield, and Energy Orbs, I would say are skills that you must have on your Restoration Staff Bar. Obsidian Shard is a burst heal, but you can replace this ability with any other burst heal that you have. I wouldn't necessarily call Cauterize a burst heal because it's that's not very bursty, but you could replace it with something like Healing Ward instead. And then for your back bar, you have a little bit more flexibility here. So Cauterize, for example, you can take that out. If you have Magicka DK DPS running Engulfing Flames, you can take this out. Uh, if you are not running Ellie Drain, you can swap this out. The only two abilities I would say you want to have on hand would be Cinderstorm and Blockade of Storms. Cinderstorm is a pretty nice heal over time. It does require you to kind of be a little bit uh, cognizant of where you're placing it. So in fights like, for example, let's say you're running Asylum. If your DPS aren't able to stack together on a Cinder Storm, then obviously it's not worth running, so you can swap this out even further. Uh, but Blockade of Storms is definitely a must-have just because it helps proc enchants and helps proc off balance. So definitely make sure to have Blockade of Storms active here. Um, so you do have quite a bit of flex on the back bar here if you're in a situation where you might not be running all of these different skills. So that pretty much covers everything in terms of healing. So... Let's talk about the philosophy behind healing. So I have actually played with DK healers before in the past. My main character is a Dragonite, and he is able to spec into all four different roles in the game. So I have healed a couple of endgame trials with DK healers. So one of the difficult things with DK healers is you're not really able to provide any sort of group synergy that is unique to the DKs. So pretty much all your synergies come from common skills, kind of skills that are available to all classes in the game. Energy orbs, shadow silk, etc. So, in that regard, giving out Lacesti's major slayer uptime or Alkosh uptime is a little bit more difficult on a DK healer because of that. So, that's one of the main weaknesses of DK healers, just the overall lack of a synergy. Uh, while it might seem kind of silly, how can one synergy make or break a healer? Think about it this way the additional synergy helps provide some additional Alkosh uptime, some additional major slayer uptime, which really helps overall DPS. While it is possible to provide that still with a DK healer, it is a little bit more difficult to do so. But where DK healers really shine is the fact that they have a on-demand major mending. The only other class with pretty much an on-demand major mending is going to be the Warden. And even that has a little bit of stipulations behind it. I basically have to be healing somebody under a certain percentage of health. Versus the Dragonite, where all you got to do is just hit Fragmented Shield and you get your major mending for 6 seconds. So in terms of raw healing done, DKs can do some pretty nice healing done per second as long as you're able to maintain that, ma that major mending. It lasts for 6 seconds and the ability itself is a little bit on the expensive side for, with uh, 3645 for your uh, cost. So don't expect to get 100% uptime major mending, but if you are able to anticipate heavy amounts of damage, what I would like to do, or I like to do, is basically do Fragmented Shield and then put down my Heal Over Times. Or have my Heal Over Times going already and then hit Fragmented Shield because it will update the tooltip as they are healing. So for example, let's say you have Energy Orb out, the current tooltip is 913. You can basically, if you're anticipating uh, heavy damage, so for example, I've healed Vima Hard Mode as a DK healer. 
when I anticipate the meteors coming out to group, I will sometimes just throw out my orb ahead of time, knowing that meteors are coming out. Uh, maybe during um, backroom phase, we know that there's going to be damage coming from the center of the room, popcorn. Uh, I just throw out my heal, and then, again, heal of time is 913, and then I hit my Major Mending. And I bumps it up. So even though I already cast Energy Orb, when I hit Major Mending, it automatically updates the tooltip. So definitely a very strong uh, strength of the DK is the ad that ability to basically be like, oh, incoming damage is going to be very heavy. I can just slap on the Major Mending and get all my hots, get that additional a uh, little bit less than 25% because it does uh, is impacted by other modifiers. But it does give you a very strong HPS potential. Um, particularly with burst heals and with all your layered heal over time abilities, very good heal healing done per second capabilities with mag decays. That being said though, healing in ESO is not like healing in other MMOs where your focus is on HPS. It is actually more on buffs and debuffs. So part of that comes from your skills, part of that comes from your uh, sets. So we already talked about being able to provide synergies, which helps provide Major Slayer and Alkash uptime. So a very, very important buff and a very important debuff right off the bat, just from your synergies alone. In terms of other skills you want to maintain, things like Comet Prayer for Minor Berserk, for example, Engulfing Flames, if you're the one responsible for Engulfing Flames to maintain that additional flame damage debuff on the boss. In terms of uh, other things that you can provide, things like wearing Olabrime, Zens, Redress, Martial Knowledge, those are sets that help provide DPS buffs, Major Courage, and additional damage taken debuffs on bosses. So part of being uh, a good healer, part of what separates out good healers from great healers is the ability to manage all these debuffs and buffs and maintain good uptimes on them. So obviously the job of a healer is of course to heal. If you're letting people die on your watch, you're not really being a good healer. But once you kind of get an understanding of the flow of the fight and the mechanics of the fight, kind of know and are able to uh, heal everybody up and, main and, get and keep everybody alive, you want to shift over your focus to maintaining buffs, maintaining debuffs. That's what is going to separate you out from other healers in the game. Being able to get 90% uptime on Minor Berserk, being able to get 100% uptime on Minor Vulnerability. That is what separates out great healers. In the description below, I do have the links to YouTube channels and Twitch channels for various healer mains who heal at high-end PvE levels. I don't believe any of them have run DK healers, but they should still be able to provide you a lot of advice as to how to approach healing. A lot of the core principles behind healing is pretty much the same across different classes. The only difference is obviously going to be what each class can provide to the group, as well as obviously your abilities and play styles. So if you guys have any questions at all about healing, you can ask me, but I would recommend checking out those couple of content creators below for more detailed uh, answers. That concludes this video. Hope you guys found this informative, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.